All right, so turns out we just kind of alluded to the fact, and we did this last week as well though, that light actually has a momentum associated with it, even though it doesn't actually have a rest mass, which is kind of weird. We usually think momentum classically is mass times velocity. And if light doesn't have a mass, but it turns out it does have a momentum associated with it. And that momentum is equal to the energy of the light divided by the speed of light. That ratio is the momentum of light. And so if you look here, we could write the momentum of light as hc over lambda, all divided by c. And we find out then that the momentum of light could be written as, the C's will cancel, h over lambda. If you rearrange that and solve for the wavelength of light, you could say that the wavelength equals h over the momentum of light. All right, so if we look at matter on the other hand, so, so here people were getting a little crazy with the idea that light wasn't purely wave-like behavior, it also had particle-like behavior. Well, a guy named de Broglie came along and he said, well, what if matter, in addition to being particle-like, also had wave-like behavior? So, and he kind of posed this, it was in his PhD thesis, and so he kind of turned in his thesis and, you know, they didn't really know what to think of what he'd proposed. It wasn't a very long thesis and it was kind of like, well, okay. And his advisor was like, well, it's really elegant, but I think he's off his rocker. <laughs> so, and, but you know, he's like, it's elegant, so I'm gonna give him his PhD. And, uh, but he sent a copy of it off to Einstein and Einstein's like, the guy's a genius, send him to me. <laughs> so it turns out he was right. So, and if we look at matter, he proposed, well, if light has a momentum, I'm sorry, a wavelength of H over its momentum, then matter might as well. They kind of like this symmetric view of nature here. And so if you look, what's momentum for matter? That is mass times velocity. And so he looked at the wavelength as being h over mv. So, and they were able to verify this later. So it turns out if you have a, a beam of electrons, so that beam of electrons can have a diffraction pattern just like light can have a diffraction pattern and stuff like this and scattering and things of a sort. And they can actually measure the wavelength associated with electrons. So, and this was kind of the backdrop of Schrodinger making the wave function for electrons and stuff like that, this kind of proposal. Cool. If you also look, similarly, you can get the frequency of matter as just the energy over Planck's constant. Same way we do for light, right? So notice light, we said that energy is HF. So if you solve the frequency, it would just be energy over Planck's constant and the same turns out holds true for matter as well. And that was de Broglie's claim to fame, or at least his initial claim to fame. So question number, what should say number three on your handout, says what is the wavelength of an electron moving with a velocity of one times 10 to the sixth meters per second? The mass of an electron is given for you there. And so simply, we're just gonna solve lambda equals h over the momentum Can somebody get me that wavelength? Okay, hopefully I'm right. 7.27 times 10 to the negative 10. Good one. Cool. So in this case, with 7.27 times 10 to the minus 10 meters, that's for an electron. And is the mass of an electron rather large or rather small? Rather small, super tiny, super tiny. So what if we had like, you know, a Noah Syndergaard fastball at 100 miles an hour? You know, okay, well you got 100 miles an hour, we'll convert that meter second, but you know, baseball might weigh, I don't know, a kilogram or something like that. What kind of wavelength, what would happen to the wavelength because you have such a much bigger mass? Really small. And this is pretty small to begin with, but now we're talking on the order of like 10 to the negative 35 or 10 to the negative 40 meters, completely undetectable. So, and that's why in the macro level here, anything that has any kind of appreciable mass, any wavelength that might have is completely undetectable. So, but with electrons, we can totally measure that wavelength out and verify all of this.